What's poppin'? It's your boy, Mike Powers, back again with another Flame interview. You already know. Before we get to that, let me get to some random shout-outs real quick. I want to shout-out my people in New Zealand, Norway, Mexico, France, UK, I see you, South Africa, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, Japan, Brazil, Germany, Palestine, Free Palestine, Europe, Switzerland, Amsterdam, and Dubai. Check. These are cats who I've talked to either on IG or YouTube. I see the whole world tuning in, and we appreciate that. We're only going stronger. If this is your first time on this channel, thank you for clicking the video. Go ahead and hit that like button because it helps the channel grow. And consider subscribing to this channel because probably 60 to 70% of the folks that's watching videos on my channel are not subscribed. Now let's change that. And now let's get down to business. For my real hip hop heads only, it was never supposed to come to this. We had a trust. Some people we know broke that trust and unfortunately provided us with substandard product in a way for which there is no excuse. Well, that's changed. You see where I'm going with this. I said all along that this situation would have to be rectified. The man you see on your screen, known as Pounds, he happens to be a patient man, but this is a business. And in business, patience is in short supply. This man, Pounds, from Glockchester, New York, he eats alone and has been sent to enforce Omerta. The time for negotiation has expired. No breath leaving your lungs can stop this thing that's already in motion. This is king shit. The heavy hand of retribution is now upon you all. From the SWAT meets of Compton, to the warehouses in Canarsie. Cats got to start paying tribute. And if not, we get a place ready for you. You become a memory out here. Rock Marcy, Benny, Crime Apple, Smoke Dizzle, Buck Wild, and yes, West Side Gun have all signed off on this. It's out of my hands now. This is for those dudes I used to beg to listen to AZ and Royce who've been crawling the airspace with that putrid dumpster juice. Uh. I told you degenerate fucks this day was coming, you short pants motherfuckers. Uh. Now it's too late. Sweet dreams, you worthless, dusty kicks wearing cocksuckers. Yeah. Because now, all the way from 585 for the first time on the Mike Power Show, it gives me great pleasure to bring to you Mr. Slept On But Never Stepped On, a.k.a. Mr. Primo Traficante. Pounds is in the building. It's good, y'all. Thank you for having me on the show, man. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Hey, man, I am so glad to have you. You know what I mean? I tell people all the time so we can get this straight. I don't give a fuck about fanning out. It's what I do, okay? So every time I see one of you guys pop up on my screen, it is like a dream come true. Real talk. I was just sitting on the couch a year ago watching you, thinking, who is this guy? Now I get the opportunity, the privilege to speak to you. I hope you're having a great day today, brother. I am, man. Having a real productive day. Hey, man, and thank you so much, not only for showing up <laughs> but for showing up and showing out because you brought the drip with you <laughs> appreciate uh, that what we what we rocking with right there on the neck uh, this is actually uh the homie blaze 89 this is his shirt you know you see yeah. we done with 448 right uh, he dropped this hoodie oh you no know, sent it over i told him i would uh wear this shit proudly word up the shit's fly and the neck the neck game oh wait table 448 that's the that's that's the business card right there. Is there any way we can get a close up shot of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That's all right. And also can be used as a weapon in case of emergency. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, shout out to the homie Greg Yuna, Mister Flawless did this joint. 
Well, thank you once again for coming through. It's my privilege to be able to speak to you today. You're from Rochester, okay, which I just found out just recently. Um, is there enough room in Rochester for all that talent that's going on up there? Uh, definitely, man. Um, Rochester is literally like boiling over at the brim with a pot with talent. It, you know, it's always been like that. And it's just, you know, it's all about timing. And I just believe, you know, now is the time for everybody to see it. There's a lot of talented artists here. Um, a lot of which got that sound that everybody's loving right now. Um, you know, that upstate New York sound. And uh, we're definitely appreciative of everybody being so tuned in like they are. Word up. And I just want to just get this out of the way before we really get started. Um, that intro, I know I didn't speak a lot specifically about your music. I got caught up in the theme of it. And I just wanted to say off rip. The voice, obviously incredible. The bars, I, I say this about quite a few cats, but I guess all great artists have something in common or quite a few things in common. The aura, the way you come across, whether it be on track or on camera, you're doing big things. I'm a big supporter of your movement. I just want to say that off rip. You said in the Rosenberg interview, because it was you and it was Flea, right? Yeah. Um, that Rochester, one of them places where, like, if you do good, got to get you out of here. Has it always been like that, or is that just the DNA of Rochester? Um, I think it's the DNA of every um, city in really upstate New York. Or, you know, there's, I'm sure there's cities like this everywhere. You know, uh, I believe we, like, rank real high in poor cities in America. You know, it's not a lot here. Um, a lot of defunct businesses, big corporations. Um, you know, I, I feel like the weather has a lot to a lot to do with. You know, the way things are up here, we're in that snow belt. We get real miserable winters. You know, it, it, it's just di it's di it's different out here. It's different up here. You know, a lot of people. They, you know, they want to know where you're from, and you tell them New York, and they, you know, they automatically think New York City. And, uh, you know, upstate New York is really just his own entity. You know, Rochester, Buffalo, Syracuse. Yeah. And so, and, and you're Italian, right? Um, yeah. Is it, there's a little Italy in Rochester? Uh, yeah, it's right over off Lyle Avenue. On the okay. West Side. Did you grow up in Little Italy? I did not. Okay. I grew up, uh, I probably grew up a little bit different than a lot of rappers. I, um, you know, I grew up in a home where, you know, my mother was on everything she could put her hands on, step pops, you know, putting his hands on us. I ended up in a group home at a real young age. So I kind of just, you know, I had, I had a different kind of, you know, my teenage years are probably just a little bit different than a lot of people's, man. You know, so then talk to me about the group home situation. I mean, some of this is already on my list. You said something about um, stealing your mom's licks. Yeah, see, I right, look. Now, we were from the city. My mom tried to move us to the suburbs. That didn't last very long, maybe like two years. I couldn't really last in none of the schools like that. Um, I was just around shit at a young age is really what it was. I just seen a lot real young and, you know, whether that fucked me up or trained me for, you know, what I had coming in my life. But, you know, it's probably, you know, shit that a kid shouldn't be saying. And as far as like that, as far as like that, you know, that line you just quoted or whatever. Um, yeah, that's really how that's initially really how me and my mother fell out. I was probably like 14. And uh, she was having me go grab, you know, something. And then that person came to me directly. Ain't want to pay. She was saxing. So they started fucking with me, you know. And I was a young kid. I'm in eighth grade. You know what I'm saying? was literally stealing your mom's licks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's kind of like initially how I like fell out with my mom. She didn't like that? No. What was that conversation like? Was she still being able to put hands on you and whoop you at that time? Did she threaten to kick you out? Did she pull nah, up, did she I, I, up I, type on you? 
I was already out the house, man. Like, like the end of middle school was kind of when I ended up in the, you know, like the group home situation, going to like alternative schools for bad kids or, you know what I'm kidding? Kids with behavioral issues. Um, that was more like, uh, you're not my son. You're a piece of shit, you know, along them lines. And, you know, I didn't, I wasn't thinking the way I'm thinking now like a grown man. You know, like I said, I was 14 years old when that happened. I was already out the house. Mm. I was like, you know what I'm saying? I don't need you already anyway, so right. I'm going to take the licks and run. Um, what I got did you guys ever reconcile that relationship? No, we didn't. no. Okay. All right. That never came to I had, to, I had my, my, you know, uh, I had not spoke to my mother since like 2009. And then um, she, you know, she passed away hmm. the year before last, which actually, ironically, you know, I don't, I never really spoke up about my relationship with my mother on record. You know, I did the project Pee Wee Kirkland. I had a joint on there, basically not like outlining, but like kind of digging into like what happened, you know, a little bit. And uh, literally two weeks after I dropped the record, she passed away. Well, you, I, I'm sorry to hear that. You got my condolences. Yeah, no, nah, you know, like I said, I never really made up with her. My mom wasn't really a part of my life like that. Um, so it's like, you know, like, look, she was, they knew she was about to die. My step pops or what I don't I don't know whatever he is. She got remarried so many times type shit. Um, you know, they they found me on social media, asked me to for some reason they was living in like in the Midwest or like Indiana, some crazy shit like that. But they was trying to, you know, get me to fly out there and see her before or whatever before she passed. So, you know, I declined, you know. You know, I dropped the I dropped the record, and then uh, the joint's called the Unforgiven. Um, I dropped the record and like on the album, and two weeks later they hit me like, "Yo, your mother passed away." Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Um, after you say a couple of years, a couple of years later now, how does how was that sitting with you that you you didn't take the flight, and and that you also never got the chance to reconcile? I mean, I'm sure there's times where I regret it, but not for real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna sit with that. I'm good. Got you, got you. Uh, and, um, yeah, the people make their choices, and you know, as adults. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And as I got older, I realized, you know what I'm saying? She did things the way she did. You know. It's consequences to everything in this life. So she got, she got, she got, you know, she got stand on that. Right. I respect that. Thank you for, for sharing that with us. I do appreciate that. Um, yeah. Like I said, man, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit different than the, these rappers that you hear out here, man. Like I'm uh Yeah, because you said on one of the songs, I don't want to jump ahead and where my, what my notes is, right? Cause you know, I bring yeah. notes, but, uh, um, you said on one of the songs, it must be killing you guys. I don't have to, something to that effect. It's killing you guys. I don't need to rap. What it is, man, it's like, I'm out here working hard. People be thinking I got all type. People don't know my story. So they, they think I got all kind of shit handed to me. You know, maybe I didn't have to work as hard, but. Question that, is, how much of that story that, are you going to tell not, now? Yeah, not the case. You okay. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. People don't know my story, and like, I don't know. Like, if they knew my story, they'll they probably fuck with me. If they didn't fuck with me, you know what I'm saying? Okay, yo, I, all right. Let's let's get into that now. How did you first fall in love with hip hop? What was the first tape, first CD you bought? Uh, above the rim soundtrack. Oh wow. Okay, okay. What's your above joint from that album? What's your What's your one joint from that one? too many pour out a little liquor oh. uh for sure um yeah. 
it's like an obscure group on there, like an obscure cut. Yeah, nah, man, this man, this mad fire. You know, it's like one of them joints. I haven't heard it since I was a kid, but like, I can hear the the way the songs yeah. go in my head. Like, I don't know the name of the songs, but it's almost like I go fast forward on the tape. Yeah, no, it's yeah. Fast forward on the tape, and I cop that shit. My dad was all about the music. You know, he didn't necessarily fuck with rap, but he was just a super into music. You know what I'm saying? He bought me that tape at Tower Records in Toronto. Shout to Tower. Yeah, Tower Records in Toronto. I remember I had the paper sleeve that you push the tape through. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had the wax sleeve on it. Yo, that, they don't make soundtracks like that no more. No, 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 they don't. They just don't. Um, but yeah, it was like that was like the first. That was like the one of the first tapes I ever got that I like went out and wanted to get. Like I had other tapes and shit, like Big Daddy Kane and fucking Rakim, and but there was like shit I taped off people or I got from somebody. You know what I'm saying? But so you was already messing with the Rakim and stuff like that, the BDP and all. Yeah. That. Okay, yeah, I was already fucking with that. And I was a little kid, so I was listening to Criss Cross and all that shit. I was, you know, I was a little man. So then you had uh, the Paid in Full album. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, so I, like, I'm gonna... like that, like I burnt that shit out. I got that shit from my cousin. I just never forgot when he said the only time I stop is when somebody drop and then bring him to the front because my rhymes the oxygen. Listen, when he said that, I was a young boy. I was like, I said, this dude might be the, the second coming of Jesus. The, the stuff that he's doing. You got to understand, like, when I was listening to that shit, I was so young, like, kindergarten. Like, I started listening to music real young because my mom was young when she had me. So she, like, listened to, like, you know, like, uh, just anything popular. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. She was she was she was party. She was all about the party, you know. Yeah. When I was a kid, so like I would I would I would hear hear joints, and then like you know I have a cousin or like one one of my mom's friends' kids that they'll you know yo you gotta hear this, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I just remember being so young and being in the music, but it wasn't until like I was 21, 22 where I actually started like rapping. But see, like so, so hip hop is one of those things, right? It don't matter who you are. You could be in China. You don't speak the language. You know what I mean? You could be three years old. You could live in Terre Haute, Indiana. When they grab you and you become married to it, that's just it. It's, it's some, it comes inside your system, especially this real, what I call essential hip hop, right? This lyrical yeah. boom bap, you know, nice beats, the drums. That's the same thing for R&B and stuff like that, right? It'll grab you, you know what I mean? It chews you, you don't really choose it. And that leads me to my next question, which is, you know, I don't know if you mess with your extended family, but being from Italian background, see, because you're not just a rapper, right? You need deep in hip hop. You need deep in it. And so yeah. how does, your, let's say your extended family or people that know you, your, your Italian brothers and sisters, uncles, how did they take to you uh, becoming so... Um, involved with hip hop. Um, I don't really have any family. Mm. Um, I have like uh, a couple aunts and uncles that I talk to here and there. Um, but I do have one aunt that is like, uh, you know, she's on social media, so she's tuned in a little bit, and she relays messages. Like I talk to my grandfather. Like right. my grandfather is like the only living family member in our family. Okay. Like so, you know, I call him, you know, well, grandpa, oh, I then you know, your aunt tells me you're doing this and that. Oh, I'm so proud of you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So like I went from being younger to fucking fuck you. I don't even want you listening to rap. Fuck that trash. Right, right, so, right, right. Oh, I'm proud of you. So, you know. Right. That's what's up. Um, I, I know a while back, something that got a lot of attention, and I'm so glad I have you here right now so we could have this discussion or have this conversation or you could just give me an answer, right? So Lord Jamar said, I think it was, I'm 
positive about Eminem, right? I, heard, I already know the question. I already know what you're Okay, you know, the, you know the question, but... Are, right, are, white, are white people a guest in the house? I wasn't even going to ask it like that, though. But, I mean, it's basically the same way of asking the same question. I want to know how you felt about that, um, you know, given the fact that Eminem already agreed with Lord Jamar on this. What's your take I'll on it? I'll tell you it? like this. Well, I'm absolutely a guest in the house of hip-hop. Mm -hmm. But also, at the same time, I'm from the hood, too. So I'm not about to get treated no type of way or disrespected. I'm going to tell you like this. This is honest to God truth. I got one son. I got one son. One child. He grown. On my son, I said to my girl, I said, I'm going to ask Pounds this question. She said, what he going to say? I told her you were going to say exactly what you said. <laughs> <laughs> you was go. I said he gonna say yes. He's a guest in the house of hip hop, but this is a real hip hop dude. So he not for the fuck shit. And the other reason why I say that is because I mean, not only is you a real one. I said to my girl, and we don't need no cosigns out here. But I, the company you keep, kind of gives me an indication as to what's going on. The way I see people showing you love and giving you that stamp. People like Benny, right? And Dizza and these guys like that. I'm like, but the company he keep is mad thorough. You know what I mean? So, so, and then you said something else about white rappers. You said these, I got the quote here somewhere, but you said these, these, all these white rappers is Ned Flanders. Yeah. That's how you feel about that? Yeah, most of these white rappers are full of shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta remember, like, fucking the kind of music that I'm doing. You know, you got a lot of people that look at me like, oh, fuck this dude. This is a white dude. You don't do none of that shit he raps about. And, uh, I mean, I don't blame him. Look at all the fucking jerk-offs they got out fucking ruining this shit. Right. You know, all, all, all it's going to take is a fucking another, uh, another Slim Jesus or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Fucking not being respected back fucking 10 more years. You know what I'm saying? We just talked about Post Malone, uh, 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 one of the two of my uh, interviews. Post, Post, Post he's, a he's a credible artist. Okay, because you know? I've only heard a couple, well, I've heard like a handful of this guy's uh, songs. Post Malone's an incredible artist. One you know? fucking song that I, I can't remember the name of the fucking, what was it, Psycho? Is that the one that I like? That's the only one? I don't, Come on, we're about to fight over the Post. Listen, we about to nah, fight over Post Malone. Post Malone. Post Malone don't need to be rapping um, or doing no like... Uh, Listen. I don't know shit. Shit that's outside of his wheelhouse. He need to just stick to what he does and got a good thing this going. This dude won an AMA for best rap. Come on, man. First of all, second of all, he's rapping. He's showing up in these um, urban cowboy yeah. outfits. Number number yeah. two, right? This, this dude got a video. Listen, I'm about. He got a video from so long ago where he was in the video. He's wearing booty shorts. I'm just listen. He's wearing the booty shorts. Yeah. Look, man, not not to cut you off, but this, yeah. this this is this is this is my sentiments on on shit. All right, now, like, if you want to go make some other shit, go make some other shit, but don't call it rap, don't call it hip hop. All right, like, That's what I'm this, at with it. this shit that we do is hoodies, hats, Tim's, big jewelry. Music. We're not. This isn't little pants. Fucking fluorescent flag colors all over the fucking place and all that shit. Right, right. Oh, look, that's that's for pop music and and you know whatever else the fuck is not hip hop and rap. But hip hop and rap don't need to be represented like that at all. Yeah, and that's what and, and and I agree with that. And this is a whole spectrum of a conversation, a continuum that we're talking about when we say being the guest in the house of hip hop. I further went on to explain to my girl, because she may be educated on some of these things or maybe not, that listen, it's been a whole bunch of white guys that was in the uh, that was guest in the house of hip hop, and some of them cats is pioneers in this game. Yeah, Beastie boys. Yeah, Beastie yeah. boys, third base. Like yeah. Know what I mean, so um, you know, M, you know, it, it might it might not be for everybody, yeah. But he got 
a technical skill level that's very fucking high. You can't deny this shit. Nobody yeah, yeah. can't say Eminem can't that's, shit. That's, right. that's what I always, that's, that's always what I say about Eminem. Eminem, incredible top tier lyricist. Yes. Just fucking, just fucking sickening, really, if you think about it. Absolutely. And, so at the end of the day, I respect his skill level. I respect what he's done at a, as an artist, but I'm not like driving around listening to Eminem. You know Machine saying? said that, right? Then Machine said that to Vlad. You know what I mean? When he was defensive, yeah, I think he yeah, said that's, it. You know, the, and, and that's just the, really the truth of the shit. You know, like, you know, I'm out here running around doing my thing. Uh, you know, Eminem is not the first thing that's coming on in the kid. Like, yo, put that Eminem on. Nah, so put that mob, put that murder music on. That leads me to my next question. Um, and I'm glad we, get, we we were able to have that conversation. You were very open and honest about it. I like that. Where's this question at? Okay. Yo, so let's say you face a 15 years. Uh -huh. um, your judge said that she basically going to let you walk, but you got to drive through a neighborhood, a real neighborhood where people is really outside, and you uh -huh. got to bump one of three songs. Now, you looking right. at, you're looking at 15 years. You could erase the 15 by bumping one of these songs full blast. All right. Britney Spears, Oops, I Did It Again. Celine Dion, My Heart Will Go On, or anything about Takashi? Uh, first of all, this is two part. <laughs> I want to know what how my lawyer swung this shit <laughs> and how much it costs. He not, you know, he's not gonna tell you. And then, um, it's uh, this is a fucking odd question, but. Britney Spears, Celine, Celine Dion, Celine, or Takashi? Celine Dion, for sure. Okay. Now, you got to picture that now, because you rolled. That's a top down, right? Your boys. No, it's seven down. Down. I, I'm good. I'm top down, pull over, light me up a chopper. And just blast. My heart will I'm near, not, far. My heart will go I'm on. Not. We out here. Exactly. Whole song. No, no room for Jack on the floating door. None of that. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> I'm glad you oh, answered that. Thank you. Uh, you, oh, you creepy <laughs> ass bitch, could have let him on there. <laughs> what What was the thing that uh, had most of your attention right before you got serious about rap? Right before uh, that. Um, like I always rapped. I had a ton of tapes out. I was always like popping in my city. But, like, uh, I think it was 2014. That's when I dropped 448 grams. I, man, I, I, could, I, I don't even – I couldn't tell you, like, an exact, like, button that went off where I was like, okay, let's put the pedal to the metal with this right. shit. Yeah. But I think it was – I was doing so wet, like, you know what I'm saying? Listen to my music. It's not a secret what's going on. I end up doing, you know – getting real heavy with it out here and I was doing real good financially and I was like, ah, fuck it. Let's fucking, let's put some bread into this shit and mm -hmm. see what happens. Cause I never really put no bread into nothing before. Right. I always just like did it, put it out. You know what I'm saying? And that was it. So you know, around with I start, it. And I start meeting people, putting money in the right places and you know, doing things that any upcoming artist that's, you know, really trying to make shit shape, like, would do. And, you know, we're here now. What kind of kid were you in high school? Uh, I was picked on. Mm. Um, I fought a lot. I was, I was the dirty kid. Like, you know, in high school, like I said, I had the best home life, and I would be in between group homes crashing on people's couches sleeping in un, you know any car i could find that was unlocked i was sleeping just you know just living foul man not not showering you know stinking going to school being you know i was the fat dirty smelly kid mm. in school so no, it, it, it shit was whack you know and you know i couldn't have all the cool clothes and i couldn't have all the sneakers and I, you know, none of the girls fucked with me, you know, and, and it wasn't like something that I was so young, just like kind of tossed out there. Like, it was like, um, 
I don't want to, there's worse things that could happen to you. But, but you know, like, it, the shit wasn't fun. High school was, high school was fucking whack. And it wasn't by choice. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, I, I ain't had no place to take a shower at. I don't got no place to clean my clothes at. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Yo, bro, you think your your parents would be mad if I slept over your house on a weeknight? Mm. Yeah, it's cool. You know, and then my friend's parents will be like, nah, I don't want that kid around you like that. Then, you, you know, I had friends that parents hated me because mm. I was the dirty, smelly kid and shit. And they would sneak me in their crib at night, let me sleep in the basement, and let me out in the morning for the mm. parents. Like, yeah, I went through some shit in high school, man. Like, this shit was whack, yo. Did, That's did, what did, I'm saying. I'm, I'm so blessed to even... For things to be like, even let's just say this right him. now. Let's just say this. Look at him now, though. Look at him now. God is good, though. You know what I mean? For sure. That's what I'm talking about. Did, did depression ever become an issue during those times? Uh, oh, definitely. Depression's kind of always been an issue with me because, you know, like being young and just having so much fucked up shit as, like, you know, you. You want to believe in God and lean on, you know, prayer and shit like that. And it's like, you know, if God was real, why are you letting all this fucked up shit happen to me? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you, start, you start questioning your faith. And, you know, there was times I was depressed. Like, you know, pe a lot of people, I see posts like mad comments on my video. Like, yo, this dude is so fat. Like, all this fat. And, you know, I found comfort in food, you know, beyond what I could get from, like, my family at the mm -hmm. time when I was a kid. So, you know, I would go to friends' houses, eat them out of house and home because mm -hmm. I fucking had, wasn't eating like that. So, like, you know, I, I, I gained a ton of weight and, you know, I just had, and, and, but at, at the same time, I had a lot of athletic ability. So I started putting it into sports and then kind of just, like, you know, my home life kind of took me like, all right, I can't play sports if I don't got money to do this for the, for the, you know, whatever gear you would need and shit like that. You know, your, your parents got to drop you off at practice. You got to be picked up. Like, I can't do none of this. The people at school is going to find out I'm, I'm homeless. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm having a hard time having a conversation. And I'm listening to everything you're saying, but for me, because, you know, I've always kind of been like the, the kind of person that when I see, especially kids going through suffering, it does something to me. And then it's something I haven't really talked about a lot on, on my platform, which is, of course, my childhood was messed up, which we can get all into that later. But then, yeah, depression does come into it. Um, and then you get diagnosed. You got to go talk to counselor. Sometimes they give you pills. I think it's important that especially in hip hop, we talk about what's going on with mental health. And I think that we do have to do something to remove the stigma away well, from I being think, able to talk I, about it. I think there's a stigma that if you fucking, if you got mental health issues, like you're like a pussy. Right. Or, or if you like talk about how like your feelings or emotion that make you a pussy or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got to put that shit out the window, man. Cause there's a lot of people running around that's fucked up that can't talk about it or got nobody to talk about it to. You know what I'm saying? And they're scared to go publicly to go find anybody to say something to it about, especially depending on who your circle is, if they're not really empathetic. So I'm glad, like, the people I mess with in real life, they understand where I'm coming from. And the people that mess with me on my platform, listen, I'm an emotional cat. I cried on my show. I only My show ain't a year old. I probably, I probably cried on this bitch like five times. And I don't care. You know why I don't care? I feel you. Cause I, because I'm a cry in real life. I'm a cry nah, in real but, life. But, but but I know but I know something that probably caught you off of guard is how easily I'm talking about yes, this. Yes, yes, yes. And you know, that's really attributed to like I'm so stone cold about the shit. You know how like cats will be like, yo, I'm stone cold, da 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 like you know what I'm saying? And that's not nothing to be proud of because I'm carrying around some dark ass shit that's on me that I can't get off me. You know what I'm saying? And that attributes to the music that y'all love so much. So it really go hand in hand. 
and you gotta let it loose some kind of way. Yeah. You got you gotta yeah, smoke. It gotta, come, it gotta come out somehow. You gotta you gotta you gotta spit it on the mic. You, you got you gotta listen. Don't. If I don't create an outlet, I'm gonna go crazy. Or somebody might get hurt. I mean, that yeah, I'm just yeah. be, I'm being honest with you. You know what I mean? Because a lot of these times when you see somebody, they just go off and they snap. You know, they didn't get that outlet, or they yeah. Didn't you don't know what happened behind all that. Yeah. So it's always good to you know. I'm talking to a therapist now <laughs> because the thing, the thing is fucked up. And, and that really just goes back to, you know, you hear my music and you fuck with it. But if you really knew what was going on, you'll probably really fuck with me. Right. You know what I'm right. Right. Connect me on a, on a different level. Like not too long ago, I think I went on, I looked up, I try not to look at the comments on YouTube like that. Cause mm -hmm. I get fucking pissed off. But I seen somebody commented on the video I got with Conway, and they were like, because I, I, I believe my verse set off, like, I said, somebody owed me for the cards that was dealt. Mm -hmm. Somebody, you know, and somebody went on there and, and wrote something to the effect of uh, somebody, oh, you know, quoted my shit, was like, what cards were you dealt? Uh, just another suburban white rapper, uh, <laughs> Silver spoon fed, trying to get everybody to believe they're from the concrete. He's not from the concrete. Da 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 da. da. I'm like, but well, you're bugging, son. I'm not from the concrete. You are a fucking wildin' dog. It's something about somebody may disagree with me. This is me. If I see it, you could be black, you could be white, you could be his, you could be whatever. It's like if you're not of this thing, I could kind of smell that on you. That's why we sitting here doing this right now. Because if you was one of them white dudes, you wouldn't be sitting here right now. I mean, I, I peeped out, I, I, I peeped the music, I peeped the lyrics, I peeped the visuals, I peeped who you with, I peeped how you carry yourself. You a real hip hop dude. You know what I mean? And you, you, I don't need to give you a fucking stamp. Yeah, you got a stamp from Mike Power. You don't need it because you got a stamp from so many other authentic dudes whose uh, who stamps you don't need anyway. Your experience is your fucking passport, bro. You know what I mean? It is nothing that, that you or I got to prove to none of these cats out here. So, yes, go out there and make an assumption. Everybody can get a five minutes of fame in the comment section on IG yeah. or YouTube and shit like that. So, I mean, I, I hope they had fun with it because they needed that attention more than you needed it, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't even, you know, I, I, I really dislike the Internet's ability to give people a voice, you know, to be rude pricks or say fuck some shit they would never say to you in real life. Right. That's really what I despise about right. the Internet. Right. Anonymous bitches. I'm about <laughs> to be on, I'm going to be on Call of Duty later on threatening some 14-year-old uh, little kids. Saying something. <laughs> <laughs> and the motherfuckers got a riot shield. Yo, don't talk shit yeah. to me when you're walking around the map with a riot shield, bitch. Little kids. You have a, you got an album called Pee Wee Kirkland. You just you spoke about that. Yeah. Um on the vlog Legends in Two Games, that's your vlog. You you had him yeah. on there. Why why do you think his name has continued to resonate across the world? Uh, and especially New York. <laughs> um First of all, Pee Wee Kirkland is probably the fucking coolest motherfucker there is walking this planet. Mm. Second of all, he's probably the realest motherfucker walking this planet. Um, you know, a lot of people will do, you know, albums and take on these monikers. And, you know, they look like a fucking douchebag doing it. Yeah. But what I did was, you know, I had the project, I had the artwork with my chain, with the picture of him with my chain on his neck. You know, I reached out to him. He saw the artwork, he heard the music. He's like, who is that, Jada Kid? <laughs> and he was you know, joking around about the shit because he was joking around about it in the blog. And, uh, you know, I didn't think he was going to come out for the video or the vlog or, like, the documentary pieces, none of that. So, you know, you got to take that shit for what it is. You know, you got somebody that may be trying to downplay me or talk down or whatever whatever the fuck. I went and did a project called Pee Wee Kirkland. You know, 
arguably <laughs> the biggest drug dealer in New York City's history, slash the best street ball player to ever live. Um, you know, I got the co-sign from the man himself. So, you know, I feel like that says a lot about just me as my me as a person and my character as a human being. Listen, um, you know on that video, you when you standing next to Pee Wee, you look like you look like you standing next to We in front of the we in front of the Apollo right on the strip of Harlem. That's exactly right. And you you look like you standing next to Santa Claus. Like the look <laughs> on your face is like so no, like not. Yeah, look, my, my wife said the same shit when I, I remember when, when I showed her the first cut of the video, she's like, Oh, you're fanning out. Because I see you fanning out. I'm like, yo, you can fucking be we Kirkland. Can you do you, had, had, did, did you ever ball in your life? Did you ever play ball? Uh, I, I, I did. I love basketball. I'm like, look, I'm that fucking short, fat dude with that fucking super wet jumper that you get real annoyed with. Like, or, or I, or I don't stop hitting, bro. Like, I, I, uh, I got a hell of a foul shot. Let's <laughs> put it like that. Hey, listen, and my my three has been wet since '84. I don't know what it is, man. Look, let me tell you something. If I was like, if I was Taller, six three, six four, six five. I'd definitely be balling. I'd have definitely been on, um, you know, some Robert Trailer shit. Hey, somebody Trailer. cue up the fucking skilo right now. I wish I was <laughs> a little bit tall. <laughs> Yo, straight up. Nah, I, I always had a handle. I was just, you know, I'm five seven, five eight with the Air Force and uh, I'm, I'm fat. <laughs> you know what, I, you, I, what, what you like? Uh, five ten with Tim's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I go five nine with the Tim's on. <laughs> uh, that's, why, that's why you always see me with the constructs on looking very looking uh auspicious auspicious i like that you uh you produce too yeah yeah i the thing is with me producing is you know a lot of people don't realize i produce and then on the on the other end of that i don't really produce for anybody and if i do it's like a whole project I really just produce joints for myself. Like, That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. Like, a lot of my projects, I'll have, like, one or two that I produce something on. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But I do got projects out. Um, I got a joint uh, completely produced. Me and the kid, Blas89. Uh, that dude can spit. Yeah, yeah. He, he He's with the shits. He's one of the illest... Uh, I can't even call this guy a singer because he's a singer. He's a rapper. He's when did I writer. first hear him? On fucking was he on the Thousand Words album too? Yes, he's he's on there rapping. But you know, I got him doing a hook on the Traficante joint. And like I said, yes. we got an EP that I produced the whole thing, sitting waiting to come out. You know, because we got all kind of scheduling fumbles and shit with the coronavirus shit that happened to kind of do a wrench in the thing. Yeah. My shit is all out of order because I was gonna say Legacy. Is that the name of the song? Yeah, that that's what uh that's what the my man Clifton passed and he plays a sax. That bitch go so hard. <laughs> yeah, y'all go go after you if you haven't heard it after y'all get done with this fucking video, go check Legacy. Blow your fucking mind. I'm all over the place, but I want to get this out because I feel I'm, I'm I got a clock in my head I'm like I'm going too long without asking this question I'm hearing you are going to play the role of big pun in a in a big L uh biopic is this correct this is this is true I can't speak too heavy on it because of my non-disclosure agreement NDA right but I am but I am playing big pun in the big L biopic put it on and that's gonna be from this song can you say what studio that's coming out of I can can you say um <laughs> the work that you put in in order to ensure authenticity to the role yes uh, I'm, I'm already a huge pun fan I already know, you know, this dude's mannerisms, breathing patterns. Or I, mean, I know all that shit from listening to him. Got you. Watching interviews and videos of him my whole life. So, you know, it, they felt like I favored Pun a little, a little bit enough to play the part. I would um, say so. Um, 
So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I, even a few years back, they, uh, Pun's family had hit me to do the, the hologram, the big pun hologram, you know, where you put the green suit on, mimic his mannerisms, mm -hmm. like, how they, like how they did for Pac. You know, that unfortunately didn't go through, but you know what I'm saying? I'm in the loop with all that shit. You talked to um, his son? Yeah, Chris. Uh, Chris is a cool dude, you know. I got a few joints with him. He can spit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so me and you are both big dudes. I like the I like to eat. So if I come out to Rochester, where are you taking me for the for the for the nice? I mean, what fast food. Like oh, fast food. Like I, I'm smoking. I need to go eat something. Where are we going? If you come to Rochester, you got to eat a garbage plate. If you get a plate, authenticity wise, Nick Tahoe's. But best plate is actually at Dogtown on Monroe. But you Dogtown get a garbage plate which is mac salad, home fries, either two cheeseburgers or two hot dogs with meat hot sauce, Yeah, basically a ground beef meat sauce, mustard and onions with a side of bread and butter. Yeah, it's a heart attack on a plate, but it's fucking amazing. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't eat that shit anymore, but and Dogtown fortunately has... Um, vegan options because you eating healthy you had lost 65 pounds before yeah I'm, I'm down about 60 like if you go back to like even just on my instagram like pictures of my face looking like this yeah you know what I'm saying? congratulations <laughs> though i lost a bunch of weight too and then i gained like 20 of it back over the past yeah I, I i gained i gained 16 pounds back during quarantine but that'll come off i, I believe they just opened the gyms like yesterday you, you you got ice cream, vegan ice cream, your own vegan ice cream flavor. Yeah, me and me and Mikey likes it. Put that shit together. Uh, you know, I got a weed strain with Borgata Farms, a tiramisu. So I was like, you know, Mikey never did the tiramisu ice cream. So I was like, yo, let's do it. But I gotta do it non dairy for I, you know, for I could eat it too. I see y'all. Uh, a lot of people came out to show y'all love when y'all debuted. It looked like y'all was. I was on your yeah, IG. Yeah. Looked like y'all was giving away samples. Yeah, yeah. The uh, we did real good, man. It was like a line the whole time. I think like even the people that didn't come to fuck with me and were just coming out anyway and saying, "Oh, they got a non dairy tiramisu ice cream." All right, let me fuck with that. Are you the first spitter that's had his own ice cream flavor? No, nah, I believe Benny. I, I believe Benny and Action Bronson before. Okay. Me. I could probably see action having his, to, given his relationship to food. Um, and as, as far as that strain is concerned, what is that, what's that going to do? Is that going to make me go to sleep? What? Uh, yeah, that's, that's going to put you out. And how has it been for you on the business side with that? I mean, you you uh, just lend your name to it. You all splitting profits. Like, has it been something that's been lucrative for you? It's, it's, it's something that we went into 50-50. Uh, my guys that grow out there in Cali. And um, we just kind of split all our business costs and take all the bumps and bruises together. Like, you know, because I think we had to do, we had did three cuts of the tiramisu before we got to the one that was perfect. Mm. So you figure three grows full of nutrients and, mm. you know, all the shit you need to, to just to make it through your cycle, you know, three times in a row, you fail. And, you know, you're going to take some bumps and bruises and shit. You know, I got a brand new strain out right now called Cannoli. Oh, That's yeah, I was going to ask you about Cannoli. It's on my list. Why are you getting ahead of me, Pounds? Yeah, yeah, nah, well, you know, man, my, my mind knows enough. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we got the new strain, Cannoli, um, getting ready to hit as soon as the album drops. That'll be everywhere where you can find it. <laughs> These are This is going out to dispensaries? Oh uh, yeah, look, we we we're got we're gonna be in the bay. We'll hopefully be in the bay and probably the metro Michigan area very soon. Gotcha. I'm working I'm working on getting some shit over to Mass. Massachusetts laws a little different. Right, so. right. Oh, and that's another question I wanna ask you, Rock Marciano. A lot of people in my comment section and they've been saying this to me. That Rock Marciano is the father of this this new wave that's going on, and that he don't get enough credit. How do you see Rock Marciano's role in this whole resurgence? Uh, I think Rock, 
plays a major role in it as far as um, just people's sound and production and the way they're rapping. Um, you know, rock is heavily known for the, you know, the drumless joints, just the, just the, the samples, chop loops running. And uh, honestly, like everybody's mimicking that shit right now, man. Like, yeah. the shit, oh, the shit's overwhelming how yeah. much they're making that sound. And like, you know, I'm, I'm not saying the mimicking is okay, but it fucking, you know, gives some credit where it's due. You understand? Does he not get enough credit? Not at all. Like I think he, I think he's, I think he's accredited by a lot of the people that count. Mm -hmm. But yeah. as, as far as like the world knowing, they need to know that Rock is the godfather of this shit, like one thousand percent. Just like it, I'm, I'm talking about like every facet, like a lot of a lot of a lot of these. <clears throat> I hate saying internet rappers, but like a lot of these like internet rappers, you know, they're doing the, the joints with no drums in them. Mm -hmm. They try to fucking do you know rapping how rock raps with the multi syllable shit, like yeah. shit they don't even do. And then you know you got a hundred guys trying to sound like rock, sounding mad uncomfortable. <laughs> some shit that that's not even what they do so what it really boils down to is just be yourself and if you're gonna fucking you know if you're gonna go ahead and just do that anyway you know pay some homage so i know that rock got a quality to him that i think I, I'm, I'm probably a little bit older than you when i was coming up we had the older dudes we called them cooties i i where i'm from which i don't talk about yet it will come out in the future but I don't know if that's what they say in New York too, like the old, like in the eighties, was they calling the older dudes the cooties. But the cooties always like now you would, I guess in the in the nineties you would call the kind of boss player or 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 a certified Mac, something like that. And and they got that talk. And when you hear Rock Marciano spit, yeah. Game recognized Game, so I could tell his spit yeah, is authentic. Rock, 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 rock. Rock yeah. Talk, talk. yeah, I mean, that's who Rock is. I can hear that in the lyrics. So if you're trying to copy Rock, if if you don't have that in your DNA, why would you even try to attempt that? That's yeah. not a style out of here, rap. That's here, a lifestyle. Out here looking real stupid. Out here fucking stocking the shelves at Target overnight, rapping this fly shit during the day. No. What's crazy is that I hope I don't make nobody mad. Somebody gonna hear this and get mad. I was in Popeyes one day, and the, the dude was behind the counter. Popeyes, I'm sorry, y'all got some of the worst employees. I said the shit, um, flat out. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care about that goddamn job. So dude was leaving, right? Um, and uh, I don't had jobs with uniforms before. I get to leave the motherfucker in my uniform. I go home. So dude, young dude, maybe in his early twenties. This dude who. <laughs> went to the back to change out a uniform so he could leave work. He, the dude came out with such drip. This dude had on, he had on the low, he had on the low at the toe. He had on the red matching shirt, the red, uh, he had on the shoes. Then he had the Gucci belt. Uh, he had the Gucci uh, belt. And I'm looking at dude, like, isn't, isn't this meant to convey that you financially secure all of this shit that you're rocking right now? But I just saw you working at Popeye's. So yeah, yeah, yeah. the shit really don't I, fuck. I think, I think that that really is what's happening a lot. That's really what's happening a lot so much is you like, you know, you got kids that love hip hop. They feel like they can rap too. And they see everybody else doing it. So they want to jump in on it. And then jumping in on it, they're trying to do what's popping or they what they think will work for them. When really they just making themselves look stupid, yeah. wasting their their own time and money, and saturating the market from it like just saturating the market, making the people that's really doing it harder to to view. You know, Absolutely. You know I mean? And and shout to Rock Marciano. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I just. I just want to say, you know, gats in the guitar case, Scarface. This be that dawn shit, ex con shit. Gats under the armpit, nigga. Know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Rocky talking that talk, man. Yo, so but smooth with it. So smooth with it, too, yo. Yeah. So I'm glad we got that out the way because everybody kept saying that. And maybe I was 
late to understand what his true impact was and people uh, but you gotta you gotta understand it's a whole group you know you know that that the whole like joints without the drums and all that that's not really my style mm -hmm. so I'm, so I, like i'm not gonna go force it trying to sound like something something else you know what i'm saying i just right. i'm gonna do what what i feel is best for me but like all that that other shit like he you know he he started doing that and i'm not saying he's the only one that ever did that right but he you know as far as i'm concerned he does it the best so without you know, question without so it's question. about the mimic and that just goes with any any genre of music when the migos was popping everybody that was you know making that type of music was going with this migos song you know, yeah, uh, I mean he's a gravitate. Remember, man, people are gonna gravitate to what's popular and not what's real. Yeah. fucking nine, nine times out of ten, man. Hey, man, you waiting on this new album uh, by Nas? Um, by I, the time yo, I, I don't, I don't, the, I don't listen. To, I don't listen to music that comes out. Oh, that's because thing. you don't need well, that I, influence. I listen like six. I listen like six months to a year later. Got you. Okay, but still, somewhere in you. When you hear the fact that Nas is putting the firm back together, that's got to, right? I Peak your interest somewhat. A little bit, but a part of me is like, oh, it's not going to be the same. So I don't want to get my hopes up. You know what I'm saying? But then, in thinking like that, if this shit's spectacular, it's going to be, you know what I mean? I'm going to be very happy. About I don't know if you've heard Echo yet. Nas and Swiss Beats? No. Okay, when you, if you another six more months got to go by, and you'll probably listen to it. Yeah, I'll, crazy. I'll, I'll do it in a few months. Do you even go on YouTube? Especially when I'm in out, I don't listen to anything when I'm in out. What's your YouTube timeline look like? Is it all big fucking jewels and vegan ice cream on your YouTube timeline when you're scrolling? No, nah, I listen to a lot of weird music. You wouldn't think. I no, listen. let's talk about it then. Uh, I, I don't. I don't even listen to rap. If okay. I do, it's old. So who are you listening? To... Listen, I just got done listening to Cranberries Linger on my phone. I'm oh, not afraid. Yeah, there, there you go. Yeah, like I listen to a lot of '80s and '90s shit. Oh, I fuck with the '80s. Me, I think 80s, me, me and Ito talked about the '80s a lot. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I fuck with a lot of Depeche Mode shit like that. Um, you but enjoy the silence. Depeche, Depeche Mode was like the first dudes that was really using the MPC. So you talk about uh I'm your own personal Jesus. That's what you come man, I'm a music dude. <laughs> but yeah, like like the Pesmo, you know, they're one of the yeah. first dudes. They're they're out here in nineteen eighty one running with the MPC making all kind of you know them weird pop techno Euro joints. Craft work. Yeah, it wasn't no hip hop, but it was something different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I fuck oh. with some depressed. I fuck with the Cure. I listen to a lot of Fleetwood Mac. A lot, a lot of Fleetwood Mac, man. Stevie Nicks. I love Stevie Nicks' voice. It took me so long to get hip to, to Fleetwood Mac. The one joint that they play in the commercial all the time. I love her voice on that. Oh, what's the Rock Marciano song you listen to when you want to chill out? Give me a Rock Marciano song for chill out. Chill out. Anything off the first Rosebud. Yeah, and then when you when but, but but I won't lie, man. Ever since she dropped that Marcelago, when I get in the car, I put I put that Richard Gear on every time. Yeah. I, I, yo, I won't even lie. I get in my truck, I put Richard Gear on almost every time I get in the car. It's just that beat, man. He's just floating on that. When he do it, he part of the he's part of the inst he's part of the instrumentation. His voice is part of the instrumentation. Yeah, Give me man. a solid that comes suck what's behind the zipper. I was literally about to quote that shit. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yo, when he said that shit, I was like, yo, he got some other crazy lines like that though too. But yo, the Richard Gear, but then of course I just posted the lyrics on my IG. I um, like uh, nah Boosie Fade too. I probably listened to Boosie Fade about four or five times in a row. Yeah, yes. I posted I posted the lyrics for um for God Loves You. Uh Hang me on the cross and all oh my gold. But I, but don't get it twisted. I really fuck with Rock's production as well, too, man. It took me but a while to wrap my mind around it. 
nah, man, that stove guy joint is something special, man. Yes, yes, man. I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much for for coming through. Okay, oh, thank, thank you for having me for real. No, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Um, like I said, you the the new album is called There Is No Mafia. Um, features on there. Who could we expect to hear? I got the uh, Blaze eighty nine and four forty eight Brad. Per usual, I got G four Jag on there. Shout to G four. I got my man Clifton Haston. He's playing some sax on there again. He's a beast at it. Oh, fucking beast out of Atlanta. Um, I got JoJo Pellegrino on there. Oh, okay, okay. I got Thirty Eight Special on there. I got Primo Profit on there. I got some joints, man. All right, so we're gonna be looking. When is that dropping? That drops September fourth. September fourth, so that's right around the corner. The video, and this the video for Jenga, the first joint produced by Teo. Uh, I got New Vegas Films shooting all my videos. Same cat that did all like my last eight joints. He's the one that did the documentary with me. Um, we're dropping that tomorrow, which is Friday. I don't know. The by day. the time they see this, it'll be yeah. it would have already been out for two days. Okay, um, but. Yeah, Jay, I saw you promoting the Jenga thing, and we're going to jump on that and make sure we support that. So there yeah. is no Mafia, Jenga, and then later on down the line, a starring turn as the late, great, legendary spitter, Big Pun. You're going to be playing that role in the Big L biopic. We're all going to be on the lookout for that, sir. Once again, thank you so much for coming through the Mike Power Show. It was my honor to have you, and we hope to have you back on again in the future, and we will be watching your progress. Um, but other than that, I'm Mike Powers. I'm out.